soul of America. We must restore the soul of America. Our nation is shaped by the constant battle between our veterans. All right, guys, welcome to Maddox News Live. We are live now. Okay, good. We should be. We are in the process of Joe Biden's acceptance speech. I mean, he's not the president yet. That happens in January. He needs to have the commencement. But this is his acceptance, sounds like, formally, because he has been acknowledged by most major networks. Uh, I think all of them, actually, and newspapers across the world and the United States, that he has been the new president-elect. And this is his speech. We are joining it live now. And let's go ahead and listen. Let me know how the audio sounds, too, when you guys get a chance. There we go. Possibilities that in America, everyone should be given an opportunity to go as far as their dreams and God-given ability will take them. You see, I believe in the possibilities of this, of this country. We're always looking ahead, ahead to an America that's freer and more just, ahead to an America that creates jobs with dignity and respect. Ahead of America that cures diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. Ahead to an America that never leaves anyone behind. Ahead of America that never gives up, never gives in. This is a great nation. It's always been a bad bet to bet against America. We're good people. This is the United States of America, and there's never been anything Never been anything we've been able, not able to do when we've done it together. Folks, in the last days of the campaign, I began thinking about a hymn that means a lot to me and my family, particularly my deceased son, Bo. It captures the faith that sustains me and which I believe sustains America. And I hope, and I hope it can provide some comfort and solace to the 230 million thousand Americans who've lost a loved one through this terrible virus this year. My heart goes out to each and every one of you. Hopefully this hymn gives you solace as well. Did he just well. say 230 million like thousand this. Americans? And he will raise you up. Yeah, and they have died, so I'm trying not to laugh. You on the breath yeah. of dawn and make you to sign like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. And now together, on eagle's wings, we embark on the work that God and history have called upon us to do. With full hearts and steady hands, with faith in America and in each other, with love of country, a thirst for justice, let us be the nation that we know we can be, a nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed, the United States of America. And ladies and gentlemen, there's never, never been anything we've tried we've not been able to do. So remember. As my grandpa, our grandpa, used to say when I walked out of his home when I was a kid up in Scranton, he said, Joey, keep the faith. And our grandmother, when she was alive, she yelled, no, Joey, spread it. Spread the faith. God love you all. May God bless America, and may God protect right. our church. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um... So we just saw the tail end of Joe Biden's commence, or not commencement, his acceptance speech. Yeah, his victory uh, what, what, speech. His what? His victory speech. I guess, yeah, that'd be victory speech. I don't even know, where, where are they now? Why are they the, the chase they, center on the river? They're in Wilmington, Delaware. Okay. Oh, it looks like his wife is going to say something. Uh-oh. Dr. Jill Biden. I suspect they're just going to hug on stage. She's not oh, going to probably, speak after yeah. Them. Okay. Yeah because they're not dropping the music. Um, you guys in the chat room are asking some questions and stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. I'll try to answer any of your questions. You're welcome, Dennis Emig. Jacob Randall says, Trump will probably incite domestic terrorism. He's already told white nationalists to stand by, stand back and stand by. Adam says, why don't you upload videos anymore? I'm working on some, Adam. There's some coming. Uh, Quinn Foster says, he was told to say, uh, say thousands because it's more understandable. No, it is thousands. It's 230,000. Yeah. Like, that's the actual number. By the way, guys, I almost forgot to introduce him. You all know him if you watched earlier today, but this is Stan, Stan the Man Morris, this, this direction over here. Stan Morris from NEA Report in Arkansas. He's joining us today and uh, doing a great job. Everyone seems to love him and <laughs> like to rib him. Uh, almost everyone. Thanks, Maddox. 
Dom C says, do you agree that this is the lamest thing ever conceived? No, I'll show you the I'll show you the lamest thing ever conceived. If you guys want to see something lamer than this. Um, I mean, this is, it was fine. It was, I missed something presidential from a president. And this was presidential, right? It was, it was, it's got a passing mark. It's fine. It's neither offensive nor inoffensive. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, let me show you this, the, the lamest thing. Um, <laughs> here we go, guys. This is, I'll show you guys, this is the lamest thing I've ever seen. It's this. Okay, this was, this, you guys remember this shit? This was during the whole, I think, when BLM first started becoming a thing, and then the Democrats went out there in these, what are these things called? Uh, kente, kente cloths? Kent cloths? Kente cloths? I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but... Basically, they went out there and... Uh, what did they call it? Oh, they called it Black Pander, <laughs> which was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen, dude. <laughs> Black Pander. I mean, that was, like, pretty lame and cringe. Uh, Kent, Kente Cloth, right? Am I pronouncing it right? Maybe. Yeah. Now, th this was fine. It was inoffensive. It was short and sweet. He, get, he went out there, talked a little bit, and went back. So I went out today and saw a shit ton of the action. Like, all the people protesting and celebrating. I got yelled at. I was, dude, I could not be more innocuous, right? <laughs> like, inconspicuous. I was just standing there, and some guy started yelling at me. And I was like, what the fuck? Uh, by the way, I have some breaking news footage. I'm gonna show you guys. I got some, here, let me make sure this uploads. That's I right. took it on my phone. I can't wait to show you guys. I took some footage, which is gonna go viral. You guys will see when I post all this shit, because I saw someone get, by, get hit by a car. Oh. Um, yeah, and thankfully it's not like, you know, it's not like super gory. It, I mean, he's not, he, he wasn't hurt, thankfully, um, as far as I could tell, but... That sounds really exciting when you say he got hit by a car. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna show you guys in just a second. But uh, let me make sure it's uploading all the way. Were you wearing your crown whenever people were yelling at you out in the streets? No, I was not wearing. Okay, clothes. well, I was just coming up with a reason why they might be yelling. I don't know. No, this guy was like a, a big time like Trumper, and he was like pissed, and he was yelling at everybody. He was like, he was like, he was like, they stole the vote. And I'm like, all right, bro. I like, I don't. I wasn't like, I was just standing there. I wasn't like one of the dudes, um, like dancing and singing. What I was just like standing there, and he's like, they stole the vote. They stole the vote, and I'm like. Okay, and then I turned, I was like filming something else and I turned the camera to him and he goes, oh, yeah, that, why don't you turn the camera on yourself? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Why would I turn the camera on myself? Well, what? I'm not the one screaming and yelling, idiot. You're the one screaming and yelling. He's like, turn the camera on yourself. I'm like, no, I don't think I'm going to turn the camera on myself. I'm good, thanks. And then he goes, they stole the vote. And I'm like, okay. I just shrugged. He goes, Oh, you're struggling for oppression? And I'm like, man, I don't I don't know what you're on about. Like, I'm just standing here just doing my thing, <laughs> and you're the one screaming at me across the street in his car. And he goes, don't you think that every vote should count? I said, yes. He goes, that's what this is about. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I guess. And he goes, stop stealing the vote. I'm like, I, I'm just standing here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me. I didn't do shit. Uh, you were stealing the vote, clearly. Yeah, I was stealing the vote. It was pretty nuts. The Big Red Bear says, I mean, Biden's no worse than Trump, but what a shitty set of choices to have. I mean, yeah, between the two, sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you guys the conservatives and the liberals, how they've been reacting and behaving in California. Uh, just in like the, the one of the hot areas like West Hollywood where they're all kind of congregating and they're right next to each other There's West Hollywood and then there's Beverly Hills right next to each other That's pretty incredible. Do you see the light show they've got with 46 in the sky? Yeah, but that what is that? What are we looking at? Oh, those got those got to be drones or something, right? I would assume they have to be drones. Yeah How is are that... they the kind of drones that Obama used? Yeah, it's got to be yeah because because you see one of the dots right there is like kind of falling out of place I think that's what that, that was. Uh, okay, let me see if I can pull up these photos and this footage, because it's pretty incredible. If I can. Yes. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see here.
I've got so much, so much shit people have been sending me all day nonstop. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna show you guys some of this footage that I got in just a minute. Is this, is this good? Should we keep this? Uh, you know what? We'll just keep this on in the background. I'll just like bring this, uh, this audio down all the way. So it's on mute. If anything happens, then we can keep an eye on it, but I doubt it. Um, all right, let me make sure. Oh, you know what? One other thing that we need to do is make sure that we have, what does this say? Well, you can get rid of that. Here we go. Okay, so what we're watching is the tail end of the Biden acceptance speech. We've got, let's see, Apostolos. Hey, Apostolos says, why did you steal the votes? <laughs> Jacob Randall says, freedom panic. Dude, nobody remembers that election. Maddox fans are literally, literally under 25. Which election? Freedom panic. Uh, I missed some content. I wish there. I was under 25. Mr. Crowbar says, angry liberals. Their candidate just won LMAO. What the fuck? There's no stopping the Trump tards. Freedom Panic says, it's ironic that conservatives are crying foul with no proof when George Bush did, this, did steal the election from Al Gore. Um, CCCH says, Biden should really be wearing a mask. COVID's not a kind of thing to kill. Uh, COVID's not kind to people of his age. I mean, the idea of a mask is so that you don't spread it. He's also standing on stage. Although, in the crowd, yeah, in the crowd, he probably should be wearing a mask. Like, when he goes out into the crowd like that. But it's more about, like, not spreading it. It's, uh, like, the masks don't protect you from getting it. It's to protect, prevent you from spreading it. Um, Andreas Marocho says, been a fan since the 90s. Thank you, Andreas. Um, Lazy Eye says, I like how conservatives tried to say that every bag or case coming out of the polling stations was Trump ballots being thrown away. I mean, yeah, of course. Of course they're going to make that claim, uh, which is pretty fun. I, you know, I'm going to lean into that meme. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so here we are. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some of this insane footage and stuff that I got today. Okay, let me pull this up and add it to the screen, add it to the, there we go. All right. So this is my own original footage that I recorded today of both conservatives and liberals who are out there after the election kind of doing their thing. And I can't wait to show you this shit because it gets pretty wild. I'm excited about this. Yeah, this should be this should be good. Um, all right, let's zoom this up a little bit, and there we go. Okay, yeah, should be good right there. So check this. This is the first. Uh, let's see, not this one. Let's see. There's more. Whoops. Oh great. Hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, this is the footage I want to show you guys. Look at this guy. You guys see that dude in the middle of the street? Right Damn, there? Yeah. So he's out there flipping people off. I thought the truck was going to hit him at first. Yeah, look at that. Oh! Did it? Yeah, that truck's like mirror clipped him. Yeah. And then the guy gets really pissed and he gets out of his car. He wants to go to like chase after the dude, but the dude walks across the street, right? Well, the back wheel, I mean, it looks like it's a dual wheel truck, so the yeah. back wheel may hit him too. It's a big truck. And he kind of he kind of like gets out of the truck. He's like pissed off. There's a ton of magas across the street. Um, and then this is the video I want to show you guys. Check this out. Look how close these cars come to hitting him. Watch. Watch this. What the fuck? Like, they're swerving towards him. So he goes back over towards the median a bit, but then watch this. So there's a, there's a car that comes up and rolls up to, towards him. Watch this right here. This Mercedes walk, rolls up to him, right? Look at that. Comes up and then it bumps him. Slowly rolls up and it bumps him. And look oh, at it. shit. Yeah. Whoa, what the fuck, dude? Whoa. What the oh. fuck?
was this. So that was our car hit. Oh, this is the guy yelling at me. Check it out. That's like seven lanes across traffic. How can he see yeah. you? And you hear him yelling too. He's like, shoot, why don't you record yourself? Oh, is that what he's yelling? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what he was yelling. You can hear, hear him again at the tail end of the video. Shoot yourself. You see that? He said it's not over. Shoot yourself. Shoot yourself. Yeah, Shoot I heard yourself, you. he said. Yeah. Turn the camera around. It's not over. Uh, anyway, that was some of this some of the state footage, and then let's see. There's more. Just like lots of lots of big old maga dozers going by. Uh, I don't think that guy's got enough flags. Yeah. A lot of you maga know, dozers. What? So what was the guy doing in traffic? He was flipping them off. I mean, he was uh, definitely like being antagonistic, but yeah, I still don't think you should run over. So he kind of he kind of needed to be maybe maybe bumped with a car, not totally hit or run over, but but maybe, you know. I mean, you can't you can't do that. You can't bump people. What what, like, what about a mirror? What about a just no. just a no? It's what about a anything? hand out the the window Nothing, and a little no. slap it's, with some vehicular well, momentum no the only thing you can do if somebody's blocking traffic like that is call the police that is you, like nobody has authority to remove somebody from the, like i've seen crazy like homeless people schizophrenic people who are like wandering into traffic and well, yeah, yeah. screaming yelling and like you know they leave their shopping carts they walk into red lights you still don't have a right to hit them if you hit them depending on the traffic laws and the and the state it could be their their fault like they could be liable but in an intersection, generally the law favors pedestrians. And that guy was in an intersection and the car intentionally drove up to him. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't like he was driving at 30 miles per hour and this guy like stepped out in front of him, which would be the pedestrian's fault, obviously. But uh, this guy like clearly drove up to him. He bumped him. The old, look, You're it right. sucks. I get it. It sucks. The guy was, it was there illegally. Um, he was antagonistic intentionally. The only thing you can do in that situation is call the police. That's it. I mean, these are the guys who are all, all about the police, right? So let's fucking call them, <laughs> right? Oh, there's a comment in chat that said, "I wonder if the My Pillow guy is crying into his own product." Oh, that's funny. That's really that's pretty funny. good. Okay, let's do let's do some more of these uh, videos. Here's another one I took. These, so this is in Beverly Hills in Los Angeles that I took this video today. These are just a long caravan of magas of Trump cars. T. Jip says, "Fuck you, Maddox." Thank you, T. Jip. So, so people understand, you're on a skateboard with ocean spray right there, right? Yeah. Okay. I just need the soundtrack playing. <clears throat> like, how many magas there are? So they're all kind of going around in circles around this, like, two or three mile corridor through Beverly Hills. And it just goes on and on. It goes, it goes on for a while. Check it out. Check out how many there are. It's incredible. Yeah, and uh, it gets it gets more intense too. So this is all heading towards West Hollywood. So Beverly Hills connects to West Hollywood, and West Hollywood is where it's a very gay-heavy neighborhood. So a lot of gay and lesbian people and bisexual people, like although a lot of people who are um, you know not straight live in like West Hollywood, and it's kind of like a gay capital of I would say even California really more. There's mm -hmm. People who've been to the Castro District in San Francisco, which is where the, the um, a lot of gay people are concentrated in San Francisco, say that West Hollywood is like a more of a gay city than even the Castro District. So this is where they're driving to in in Beverly Hills. You see like the Trump supporters over here, they're all kind of converging out onto like this little parkway thing. Tim Pud says they celebrate by losing by a traffic jam. Well, to be fair, you'll see like both sides are kind of doing a traffic jam. These guys were definitely blocking traffic though. They were just getting out of their cars and like hugging each other and congratulating each other. One guy had this giant MAGA hat. It looked like a giant foam MAGA hat that he was wearing when he came out of his car. There's a lot of them out there. 
Uh, Aramnet, I don't care, man. Here, let me help you out with the band. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. See ya. Bye. Bye, bitch. Uh, <laughs> let me help you out. Yeah. Uh, oh, Maddox, I don't like this coverage. Unsubbing. Good. Fuck you. Let me help you out. I'll, I'll help you so you don't come back. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Okay. <laughs> Here is... Might be too loud. Let me turn this down a little bit. There you go. So now this is in West Hollywood. These these are people celebrating like the Biden victory shit. Check this out. <laughs> oh look at that. There are people like out there twerking and dancing and stuff. Check out this chick over here on the right. It's kind of funny. Past her right there. Look at. That. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. And she was just doing that because she saw you, right? Yeah, it was me, yeah. Me. It was actually a librarian. She was uncomfortably turned on. Ah, okay. WAP. Yeah, WAP. That's what happened. Uh, so that's in West Hollywood, and it, the crowds only got bigger and bigger as time went on, uh, as the day went on. So this was around, I'd say like 4, 4 p.m. this afternoon, uh, Pacific time. Rossby says, the tears aren't yummy, they're bitter and sign of deep delusion. Dom C says, the ladies cannot control themselves at the sight of a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, though. You laugh, but it's the best way to get around through this bullshit. Can you imagine being in a car in this fucking no. bullshit? I was lapping cars. I was going back and forth lapping cars all day. Are you fucking kidding me? I would get. I would be in this thing a billion times over on a bicycle than a fucking car. No way. No fucking way, man. Hell no. Um, yeah, the crowds were very, were very happy. Uh, it was a very celebratory atmosphere. Chicken the beige looked really hot. So, but anyway. Oh yeah, there's some babes out there for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Confirmed. Babes confirmed. Um, <laughs> there's uh, tons of people. Everybody was wearing a mask though. Like I know That's this good. is clearly not social distancing, but everybody here was wearing a mask. Like I didn't see anybody wearing a mask. Well, that. Well, there's one. There's one one person over here. But um, generally, like, I saw everybody wearing a mask. Uh, except, and I'll show you the exception in just a minute. So I posted some of the shit on Instagram. That's what this is. Oh, we didn't see this video, too. There's more people kind of, like, celebrating. Pim Baelish says, look at the irresponsible public intoxication. Oh, this dude seemed pretty plastered. <laughs> he was so drunk. Wow. I saw him like uh, grinding like a table or something earlier. He just like picked up a mask off the ground. That guy's probably not. I don't know. He seemed pretty. He seemed pretty wasted. Okay, so this when I was riding when I was riding back um, the other direction. This. This lady was out in, her, in, in, in the street just twerking at the intersection. People, like, at every red light just get out of their cars and start twerking <laughs> and going crazy. Like, people are just cranking fuck Donald Trump and driving up and down the streets. The honking can be heard for miles. There's so much honking going on. A lot of people staying, uh, sitting outside on top of their cars, driving around, cruising, celebrating. That's what this is. Just people hanging out. very celebratory atmosphere everybody's like talking to one another and dancing outside their cars it's a very it's a very slow pace slow pace <clears throat> excuse me so obviously you can see if I was in a car I wouldn't be able to get any of this footage the best way to get around right now is either on foot skateboard bicycle motorcycle or scooter like anything that's not a car basically unicycle Involved. motorcycle unicycle Actually, yeah, some people have those electric unicycles too. Those, you know, those like Segway type things. Yeah, yeah. yeah one wheels. Yeah, there's a bunch of those actually. I saw a bunch. Of would those. you Would you please get one? <laughs> uh, I would probably eat shit at some point, but yeah, I'll do it. I can do it. I, I have so many friends who ride that stuff. Yeah. Puffernaut says Salt Lake City has been totally chill all day. Oh, thanks for the update. I was wondering how Salt Lake was. 
I mean, I imagine Salt Lake is like uh, Utah's a little pretty conservative, but everybody's going nuts out here. Look at this, people twerking. Guy standing on top of his car. So how far is this away from the Trump supporter parade? Good question. So this is less than a mile away from the Trump parade. So I was just, part of the reason I was hanging out here was to see if the Trumpers, if the MAGAs would like clash with these people, because it would be messy. These guys are not having anyone right on their parade and the MAGAs are really like pissed off right now. Like they're accusing election fraud and all this other shit. So uh, I was just kind of waiting around to see if any MAGAs made it through here. But I think the cops are doing a good job of coordinating these two groups off. Like they know that these two groups want to have an antagonistic interaction and conf uh, like confront each other. So the cops are making sure the MAGAs turn down this other street that comes right before this whole area. And they're going around in a loop around Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is the next uh, little county or uh, district adjacent to this area right here. And I'll show you exactly where the cutoff is. Because then you'll start to see the MAGAs and I'll show you what the MAGAs are doing as well. Um, Cameron says, how long before Joe resigns and Harris becomes president? I mean, I don't know why that would happen. Yeah, that's unlikely. So this is around... <laughs> This is around that first video that I showed. So people going nuts here. This is another video. People, so on the other side, the lane over there, there are people are popping champagne, graffiti, or confetti rather, um, dancing in the streets, there's music playing everywhere. People are, people were offering me free shots the whole way down. Like people were like, hey man, want some tequila, want some booze, I'll pour it in your mouth. I'm like, I'm good, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna go to this liquor store and pay for it. Thanks, but no thanks. And you're not supposed to be able to li li uh, drink on the street, but everybody was going nuts. Okay. Now I'm getting into the MAGA area, uh, and this is <laughs> this is kind of like what you're seeing with the uh, with the MAGAs. There was a giant. I don't. Even, I mean, I don't even think I've seen a vehicle this intense. Like I've seen SWAT vehicles before, but this looks like that's an MRAP. Oh, okay. You know, so that is a, like a military vehicle, right? That's yeah. That's totally a military. Either it's a military used vehicle or it's a militarized, but it looks like something that was probably painted in uh, desert camo at one point. Okay, that makes sense because this this looks like it's, um, it's from Batman or something. Like, it's insane. This is, like, pretty fucking intense. Um, okay, whoops. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what someone said in the chat room, too. said, Skate Forever 515 says, that's some Batman shit. Uh, K. Jacob confirmed. He says, that's an MRAP. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Watch out for those IEDs, says Dom. <laughs> uh, Mist Fusion says, yeah, that's surplus equipment from the military, mine resistant. <laughs> Good thing we have this in West Hollywood and Beverly Hills. By the way, this was Beverly Hills that I saw this in. Beverly fucking Hills, like the most like ritzy area in California, in Los Angeles. Um, okay, let's see if, where's this other footage? Why isn't it, you know what? It might not have finished uploading. Let me check and make sure. Let me make sure this is all done uploading. Yeah, it should be. So let's see what's going on. Uh, where is all my mega footage? Somebody mentioned there's a bad font on the side of that vehicle. I agree, the italic font didn't work on the MRAP. You guys not crazy about that that uh, font? Oh, here we go. Okay, here's the here's the mega footage. So right past that, all that stuff, like all the people celebrating stuff. This was down the street from that, like less than half a mile. That's incredible. It's so close. Yeah. I mean, it's a fucking powder keg. I told my friend who lives nearby, I said, stay the fuck home. Don't go outside today. It's not a good time. You don't want to like be out like caught in this mess, especially if they have a confrontation. Because these people are looking for a confrontation. Like everybody's kind of like on edge. They like both sides want to tell each other, fuck you. And you know, it could be, a, it could get ugly really fast. So these are all the magas. Here's another one. Oh, 
the steel. Oh, okay, that's a good sign. They have they have that sign so fast. So this is Beverly Hills. Almost like Alex Jones style, like yelling out of their megaphones in their car. Stop the. Oh, I forgot. I can see what that sign says. Stop the Biden stealing. Stop Biden stealing the election. Biden hair is out now. Stop the steal. A lot of protests. Um, here's another one. These were. So when you're driving here, are you draped in the American flag? No, I basically dressed how I am now, minus the crown. God, I, I did, wish you I had wanted... the crown and your robe on. Now. Yeah, I wanted to. No, I wanted to remain neutral, so I don't get like accosted by either. Like, I don't want to have a, you know, turn into a whole thing with either side. True. Because I got shit to do. I don't have time. I don't have time for this bullshit. And then this was a guy in a megaphone. Check this out. Or this lady. She's saying we choose light versus dark. We choose Trump, is what she's <laughs> saying. Ooh. We choose Trump. We choose light over dark. Anyway, that's the that's the footage I got mostly. I um, love it. That's kind of like live reporting out on the scene. Yeah, man, on the scene reporting. Like I don't fuck. Up. You guys think I'm just like. Oh, let's just pull up some fucking uh, uh, web browser or, you know, like, let's just look at what the AP is saying. No, man, I'm out there on the fucking streets. I'm like a beat reporter. That's what I'm doing. You know, with that's a pirate the, flag. With a, with a pirate flag. I'm out there getting all the snarky footage. But I got that footage of that guy, man. No, I that, that was good. Great. What? That was good. I mean, honestly, yeah. I hope that person's not hurt, even though they seem like a kind of a douche out there. Um, you know, that's crazy that you saw that. Yeah, honestly, I think that they're both kind of being antagonistic. They're both like he was breaking the law clearly. Um, he shouldn't have been out in the street when with the with a green light. But at the same time, you can't ever hit somebody. Like you can't hit them with your car. I no, you really right. can't. That's the point when the law has been broken. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's check in with the chat. By the way, if you guys are here for the first time, uh, this is Stan the Man Morris from NEA Report. Throw, throw thack, throw thock, throw thock says, as a Trump supporter, I hope the Republicans keep the Senate and take the House. I mean, is that all you hope, throw thack? Come on, be honest. <laughs> you There's a chance that... they'll keep the Senate. They won't take the House. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, no, I, it sounds like the Senate is going to be 50 50. It could very well be 50 50, yeah. Right? Isn't that the latest? Yeah, I haven't looked at the latest numbers. Uh, it, you got to point, remember though, if it's 50 50, Technically, Biden controls it because the president of the Senate is the vice president. So. But that being the case, I know there's going to be at least, I think, two runoff elections. Oh, good. Jackson says, Stan the Andre the Giant Morris. Thanks, Jackson. Take care of you. All right, um, Ben. Good. Now, yeah. Um, now, I don't know the exact elections for the runoff. I don't have them in front of me, and I know I should, but you know. Hold on. Dom C, you dumb bitch. Dom C says... LMAO, the centrist dream, a partisan deadlock. That's not a partisan, that's not a centrist dream, you fuck. Do you, you guys still don't understand. I, I've given up on the phrase centrist. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer going to use it anymore. I, I guess I could describe myself as a moderate uh, rather than a centrist. But a centrist, like everybody thinks like, oh, it should be 50-50. Everything should be equal. You can't make a decision on anything. That's not what centrism means. I'm so tired of explaining it. I'll try it one more time. But the centrism is basically... When you assign a numerical value to each belief that you have, whether it's conservative or liberal, and then you put that on a graph. So 
So you get like a negative one for a conservative belief and a positive one for a liberal belief. Uh, and then you put that on a graph. And if you happen to hold beliefs that conservatives value and liberals value very strongly, those cancel each other out. And so the net sum is zero. And that's what puts, puts you in the center. That's what a center is, a centrist. You're in the center of the graph. It doesn't mean you don't have opinions. <laughs> it doesn't mean you don't have positions. I mean, clearly I uh, am not very impartial when it comes to this election. Uh, although I, I uh, you guys, if you saw the stream earlier, I told you guys who I voted for and I showed you proof of who I voted for. Yeah. Um, okay, Danny Nguyen says, my Cuban-American friend, don't trust you because you have a pick of Che Guevara. You're a Marxist. You're an idiot. It's not Che Guevara, it's me. It's me. It's me. It's a parody. Does your Cuban-American friend understand it's a fucking satire? Huh? So why don't you get your friend on here? Let me talk to him. Fucking explain this shit. I actually didn't want to follow you for a long time because I don't like Quaker Oats, but and I realized that was a parody too. Yeah, they're all parodies. Oh. Uh, strange online man. Let's see. Uh, Drew Dog says finger wagging intensifies while Maddox shuts it down. That's right. I'm gonna shut everything down. Mixed Fusion says I've heard Trudeau's hair smells nice, so they will get along. Well, also they're both incompetent. Uh, Curtis Patterson says, so if it's essentially centrists love all things grilling and barbecuing, I mean, I'm not going to say no, but I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, Flying Walter says, hey, Maddox, what's up? Uh, Chris Caldwell says, for your information, Trump supporters don't really care about Biden either way. Wanted our guy, didn't get him, sucks, but we get another shot in four years. Fraud is what we're upset about, but don't care about Biden. I mean, Chris, that's a very, that's a fair point of view. And I think that that's the majority of Trump supporters. I think Trump supporters are upset that they don't get another conservative in office for four years. But do you really find Biden that offensive? I mean, really, come on. Besides the fucking scaremongering and panic and fear, all that shit, all the fear mongering. Do you really think Biden is a communist? Do you think he's a socialist? Do you think he's going to do you believe any of that shit Trump said about how we're not gonna have electricity and air conditioning anymore because when Biden comes into office? This fucking jackass that's been like saying, oh, I lied to people because I didn't want to panic them. And then he's telling people that we're not gonna have air conditioning and, and uh, <laughs> what, what, what did he say that we wouldn't have under a Biden presidency, like air conditioning and flowers or something like that? I, I don't know. If Hillary won, we were supposed to get taco trucks on every corner and I'm still waiting on that. So. I would love taco trucks on every corner. There's one nearby, that's not bad. Um, let's see. Let me read some of these comments here. Okay, uh, RPG fan says, according to AP, it looks like Dems have 46 seats and Republicans have 48. So this may be another fun four years of Mitch the bitch fucking over the Americans. Yeah, I'm really surprised that Mitch McConnell got reelected. Uh, he's just absolutely, like that. he's such a fucking hypocrite. Such a hypocrite. Uh, let's see. Sharks F6 says, there was a time when I thought Maddox was intelligent. I was wrong. I hope you idiots enjoy your socialism. <laughs> <laughs> Sharks, you moist bitch. Why are you such a, why are you such a fucking <laughs> soggy ass bitch, man? Why are you so fucking salty? Just, just accept it. Your guy lost, just fucking nut up. It's not gonna be socialism. It's not gonna be the policies you like, but just fucking, it's not, it's also not gonna be like the end of the world. Biden is a middle of the road, seasoned politician. And and people say he hasn't accomplished anything in 47 years. Isn't that a good thing? Don't you want a politician in there who doesn't get, who doesn't do anything so they can't cause any harm? <laughs> That's the best case scenario. Fuck, yeah, give me two Bidens, put them in there. Let them just bump into each other, canceling each other out all day long. I'm, I'm happy with that. Let him do no harm. I'm happy with that. Mixed Fusion says he's corrupt. Who's corrupt, Mixed Fusion? Max Avedisian says, why is socialism always being roasted like it's a bad idea? Because it is. <laughs> let's, let's, call it, let's call a spade a spade here. I mean, there are some countries that are more socialist leaning and some more capitalist leaning, but I've never seen socialism work in a video game as an economic model. And I've never seen it work as a social model, like in, in countries, in real life. Show me a successful socialist country. And I'm not talking about like Scandinavians one, which are like, you know, uh, 
capitalist or democratic socialism or whatever you want to call it. Like, it's not pure socialism. Show me a successful socialist country. They're always a mess. They're always a mess. Because it really comes down to the fundamental intrinsic or extrinsic motivation of why we do things. If you take that away from people, then it causes all sorts of problems. It stops, it kills people's motivation, I think. Jacob Randall says, Maddox, what's your opinion on UBI? I, I mean, it's too, the, the verdict is, is still out. The jury's still out, rather. Uh, it's too early to say. I don't even know. Like, they would have to do studies. They would have to do tests. They would have to do experiments and see what would work with UBI and what wouldn't. Um, I, it's too early to say. I don't know. I just don't know. M4JR for five, thank you for the super chat, says, to play devil's advocate, do you think it's fair for Dems, if Dems say voter fraud is nothing if they've talked about Russian collusion for four years? Thank you, Maddox. Thank you, M4JR. Okay, let's talk about this. And uh, Stan, you might have some opinions on this too. So the difference here is that we have evidence. This is not disputed. Russia did interfere in our elections. They absolutely did. That is the conclusion of the intelligence reports. They did interfere in our elections. What they didn't find in, through the special investigation is direct evidence that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians for that interference. So let's get something clear, okay? The Russians absolutely did interfere in our elections. That is beyond a shadow of a doubt. There is so many examples, there's so much evidence. They had huge botnets running on Facebook, tons of Facebook pages that they were operating. They uh, they worked with the, the, the Cambridge Analytica data. They, I think it was them who hacked Hillary's emails. So, and by the way, are we going to just say it's okay to use hacked emails that a foreign state does in order to damage a political opponent? How fucking corrupt is that shit? I don't care who, if it's Trump or Hillary. If either one of their emails get stolen, I, as a decent fucking person, would say... No, nah, no, nah, this is, it's not fair game anymore. Unless there is direct evidence of some crime in there, which there wasn't. But I would say that's not fair game. These emails are not fair game. I'm not going to try to win at any cost, even if like a fucking foreign state hacks a political opponent or political rival's emails. That's insane. I don't care if it's Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. In fact, I, I had the same position with Sony. You guys remember when Sony got hacked? I do. Right, like three, four years ago, Sony got hacked. Mm -hmm. And people started sharing all the emails and the salaries people were making and script ideas and projects and stuff like that. Everybody was sharing everything. And at some point, I even put my foot down. I'm not even a big fan of Sony. I don't like the way the Sony has run their game, video game division. It's been very, like, iron-fisted and they kept changing their policies after... Like, I bought a Sony PS3 where it was guaranteed the original the version that i bought had the backwards compatibility with ps2 well then they released a firmware update that took that away that's like you're paying for something that you know that you're suddenly taking away from me fuck you you that's bullshit sony's a kind of a fucked company but in spite of my problems with sony i still said it's wrong to hack their emails even though i don't like the country uh, the company it's fucked it's fucked you don't hack people's emails you don't share that shit it's not fair game it's illegal. And Trump didn't put his foot down. He didn't say, oh, uh, these emails were stolen. These emails were uh, acquired through illegitimate means. So I'm not going to look at them. And they did it again this election with the Hunter Biden shit. And how did that turn out, by the way? The Hunter Biden shit. Does anyone give a shit about that? You just embarrassed of some poor guy's son. He's not involved in this shit. He's not running for president. Who gives a shit about Hunter Biden? And all those emails, like, didn't have anything in it. First of all, the veracity of the emails weren't even checked. They came out right before the election. That's the point of those emails. And I guarantee no one's going to talk about those emails anymore because no one cares. It was just meant to do a little hit, drive-by hit job, and it accomplished its goals. I think that kind of shit is foul. I think it's below the belt. I don't think it's fair, and I don't think anyone should stand for it from either side of the political spectrum. You guys should all feel bad about yourselves. <laughs> Not you, Stan. You're all right. Oh, you uh, know, I still feel a little bit bad. Um, 
you know, good points, honestly, uh, about the about the entire thing with the, the emails and the election interference. I mean, there's also a big difference between what was being reported or alleged, however you want to view it in the media, related to the last four years or the last uh, the 2016 election and Russian interference, which was primarily, I mean, Maddox, help me out with this if I'm wrong, but I believe it's primarily a more of a propaganda influence, as in they bought so many ads on social media websites that had no barriers for that to happen, millions in ads, and then use them to target voters in certain areas. Um, I think there was also some stuff about allegations, whether or not Donald Trump worked with Russia, and, and I don't know that that was ever proven. The allegations Donald Trump is is heaving is that, that fraudulent votes are being sent in or somehow trucked in to uh, polling sites. And it's a little bit different because there's never been Special any Special counsel Robert that. Mueller did not Sorry, find sufficient. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, just saying there's never been evidence that there are, are loads and loads of illegitimate ballots being brought in. I mean, we, right. we've seen exceptions. We've seen certain instances, but the only party this time that we've seen telling people to vote after the polls closed, Maddox showed it earlier. It was it was the Trump party, the Republican right. party. Right. So. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of criticism of, you know, fraud or accusations rather of fraud and people, you know, casting fake ballots and stuff like that. None of them have turned out to have any merit. None of them. And I'm sure if you, you know, after the fact, you're going to find some, uh, you know, illegitimate votes that went through, I'm sure. But it's not going to be enough to sway the election one way or another. It's not like a big nefarious scheme on behalf of the Democrats. I just don't believe it. The only evidence that, that they have right now is Trump is losing. And if right. there was other evidence, then, okay, let's bring it to the table, listen to it, look at it and examine it. But but it's not evidence because your guy lost. That's not evidence. Right. Um, well, they, they when he came out originally saying that there was going to be fraud um, if he loses the election, that made it so that there was only two possibilities that either he wins or the election was stolen. The possibility that he could lose, let alone lose legitimately, was never even considered. It was never an option that he could lose. So when you have set up the game where the rules of the game say that either we win or it's fraud, you're setting it up so that the only conclusion people can have is to be upset. I don't blame Trump supporters. I mean, <laughs> fully for being so upset because they've been sold a bad bill of goods. They've been told that this shit was going to get stolen. They've been told this entire time the election was a fraud and the Democrats were going to rig this election and so on and so forth. So that's what they believe. And now they're up there pissed off and I kind of don't blame them, but it's also not true. This is, this is like, it's just bullshit. This is not true. It's just not reality. Jeff West says, Maddox, your highness, when can we vote on the internet on specific issues and not representatives? Yeah, not soon enough. Simon Smith says, MAGA should console themselves that if Biden dies and Harris becomes president, Trump will still hold the record for the POTUS with the biggest tits. <laughs> great, com great commentary. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How is it, what does it mean that Trump went golfing today? I don't know. That is really interesting, isn't it? It is. It is. How do you, what mindset do you have to be in? I mean, is he just, is he like, I don't care anymore? Screw it. I don't <laughs> you know? know, man. I don't, that is an interesting question. What does it mean that on this day, which is a pretty important day, let's be honest, on this day, Trump went golfing? What does that mean? I'd like to know what chat thinks about that, because I, I really, I, I can't come up with a theory on that. I mean, why, I guess I can, I, he likes doing it, but how, how does your, I, I don't feel like I could enjoy this day if I was, if I was him. Uh, my only guess is if I'm just going to play, like just assume the best possible intentions for Trump, which is that he maybe just relaxes him. That's, That's a good I bet yeah. you're right. That's what chat says, an outlet for stress. And I, yeah. That's what they're saying? Yeah. That's that's a good... I never considered it. I mean, I've never played golf. Golf's not my thing. I've played putt-putt golf. 
but it was really stressful. So, yeah, that's my that's my only guess is that this it's just a, a way that he was trying to relax. Makes sense. And yeah. maybe that's why he was uh, out there golfing today. Um, Samuel says he's a sociopath. That's how. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Anonymous says, uh, whoops, that went past the screen. Akio Akimai says, um, whoops, I missed it. Man, these comments are just flying by. Bila88 says, Maddox stole all the votes. No. Dom C says, all he is going to do now is negotiate himself out of jail and off we go, unfortunately. No, here's what I predict is going to happen with Trump in the foreseeable, for the foreseeable future. Here's what, you're, here's what you have to, to, uh, to look forward to with Trump. For the foreseeable future, Trump is just going to continue campaigning for the rest of his life. He loves these rallies. He loves them. He's going to show up to these rallies. He's going to keep doing them for the rest of his life, for the foreseeable future. And he's going to start charging money for them. And he can make a, probably a pretty good living just doing these rallies for the rest of his life. Then he's going to get a book deal, or a TV deal, or a movie deal. And even though he's in the hole half a billion dollars to um, Deutsche Bank, I think he'll be fine. I think he's going to be able to pull it together, sell his properties, do whatever he wants, and then just keep going on these MAGA rallies for the rest of his life. Edgar Bachman says, Maddox, I asked this already, but do you think interference is where this bullshit QAnon stuff came from? It seems so well produced. Do I think... Do you think interferences is where this bullshit stuff? Um, no, I don't. Oh, you mean the QAnon stuff? No, the QAnon stuff I think is uh, probably a grassroots thing. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure foreign states are trying to influence it too. But oh, here's okay. a good question, Maddox. What's your take on the coming tax increases? Uh, I know, Maddox, you are in the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar and up uh, bracket. What do you sure. think about your taxes getting ready to go up? Yeah, okay, good question. Let's look at that tax. I saw a tweet that's that uh, here, let me show you let me show you guys this tweet that explained it so perfectly the other day because a lot of people don't understand what a marginal tax rate is. So let me show you guys what a marginal tax rate is. And okay, here it is. I found the I found the tweet. Let me add this to the screen and then we can talk about this. Uh, and and taxes may go up, but it still has to go through lots of different layers of government and hands and people looking at it but here's the tweet okay this guy says this year is 20 the year is 2021 joe biden is president you earn four hundred ten thousand dollars ten thousand of them are taxed at a higher rate than the other four hundred thousand your fists clench the communists have won <laughs> so guys this is how marginal tax rate works right if they're saying that taxes are going to go up for four hundred thousand that doesn't mean all your income is going to get taxed at a higher rate. It means anything you make above that. So if you're making $400,000 a year or less, your tax rates won't change. If you make $410,000, the extra $10,000 gets taxed at the higher rate. That's it. It's that simple. So the only t people that, that, that will really start to feel the impact, the worst, the people who will feel the, this impact the worst is people who make like five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars a year because that ex that additional money you're making is going to get hit harder than the original five uh, four hundred thousand right uh but if you're making like one million two million three million plus which now you're starting to talk about like the top three percent of society maybe the one percent of society once you start making million plus a year uh, the sky's the limit. You don't tend to stop making it at a million dollars. You start to get investments that start paying dividends and real estate purchases and all sorts of stuff. Your income just starts flowing in. So you're probably not going to be hit, as heavily hit as someone who's closer to the 400,000 mark. Um, I'm not crazy about it. I'm not like crazy about just taxing and spending indefinitely, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Like with the Democrats, you get this, this horse shit. And with the Republicans, you get like, they're fucking mess with healthcare. I don't know. Pick your poison. Um, let's see. Oh no, it says then Maddox, how the fuck are you going to survive this? Jeff says the people who make two hundred thousand dollars a year and then inflation in the first year of the Biden fiscal snowfall. What? 
Uh, Mixwell 1983 says Biden isn't even going to serve a full term. They're going to pull the 25th Amendment. Kamala is going to be VP. Why would they pull 25th <laughs> Amendment? Oh, do you guys believe like the dementia story storyline that's going around? You guys think this is going to be like a dementia thing? I mean, that's the that's the only explanation I can think of. You know, there um, is one interesting theory to think about. I mean, I don't even know that I'm saying it's a theory, but what if before he leaves office, Trump was to step aside so that Mike Pence could take over and then pardon him? And I ask that because there's a really strong chance that he's going to be facing at least some kind of, of investigation, if not full on prosecution from, at a minimum, the Southern District of New York. Well, who's going to come after him? Who do you think it would be? Well, it, the Attorney General in New York is one of the people right now that has come after him just hard for the last four years. But, you know, I think if, if people like that have any opportunity to bring a charge against him, especially for something on taxes, it's going to happen. And I just wonder if, if maybe the president might be concerned about that. I, I wonder. I wonder if he is concerned about that. Um, probably. I mean, the Attorney General coming after you specifically is no... Nothing to uh, to snuff your nose at, you know? It's like, that's a pretty serious one. Um, I actually, and somebody corrected me, they, they pointed out president can't pardon state crimes. So, very good point. Uh, and if that's if that's correct, I believe that is correct. So, Akio um, Kimi says, tax codes put in place by presidents before him and no. Uh, says, Biden is far more corrupt and has paper trail. Akio... I keep hearing this about Biden and Hillary and maybe, I mean, but where's the evidence? Where's the evidence of this corruption? Show me the evidence and I'll take a look at it because I'm curious to know. I want to know. I don't know that Biden is corrupt. I do know that Biden is somewhat incompetent and also a politician, so he's kind of a hypocrite. <laughs> he changes his stance on things when it's suitable for him, like the fracking comment he made. Uh, Dazuki P2B says, Maddox, do you think it's wise to attack Trump once out of office? What do you mean attack? <laughs> like politically, I guess? Uh, let's see. Mixwell says, Maddox, what do you think will happen with the Hunter laptop deal? Being a longtime fan, used to read your articles. I think nothing's going to happen with the Hunter laptop deal. I think it was bullshit that they even used it. Frankly, they're going after the guy's son, which is really fucked. That's um, dirty. Mixed Fusion says, read the emails, it's undeniable. Mixed, I really want to believe you're not an idiot. <laughs> I really, just from the bottom of my heart, because it makes me feel good. You not being an idiot makes me feel like I'm attracting smart, intelligent people who like to watch my content. Was that... A compliment or backhanded? I think I was an entirely backhanded compliment, and I was really just complimenting myself. I really, really want to think that you're not an idiot. Um, let's go over this, okay? Just a quick poll in the chat room, just out of curiosity. Here, you know what? Let me do a quick online poll. Let's do a quick online poll. All right, online. quick online poll. Quick online poll. I want to do an online poll uh, if you're slowly decreasing the saturation in my camera to the point where I look like a member of the Adams family. Because <laughs> I, I look more pale now than I did, I don't know, anyway. Uh, somebody said, no, nah, I can't read that. <laughs> okay, guys, here is, here is the poll. I'm going to post it in the chat room. Okay, I'm going to post it in the chat room. I'm spamming it in the chat room. Type on, uh, click that link and hit that poll, and I'm going to pull up the results in real time. We're going to watch this together in real time. Okay, that link is spammed in the chat room. Check it out. Take a I'm look at it. I'm voting right now, by the way. You're voting? Yeah, I'm voting. Okay. <laughs> All right. There, there I like it. Okay, here is the poll results. In real time. Okay. 66 votes in one minute. Wow. Yeah. Whoops. All right. Here are the results. Okay. So I asked, the question was, <laughs> do you save your emails on your hard drive in PDF format? 
It's stunning, the results so far. Yeah. It's like 100% is saying no so far. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm assuming that means they found these emails in PDF form on, on his supposed laptop here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. There's a There's a photo also that they found, they allegedly found, of a crack pipe hanging out of his mouth. Yeah. With the covers pulled all the way up to his neck and his arms under the covers. So evidently he put the crack pipe in and then pulled the covers up over his head, uh, right to his head. So, so it's, it's possible like a friend pranked him and took a picture of the crack pipe. In his well, mouth. that's what I would say exa is exactly what happened. And it may not be a friend either, you know, but he is like, he, he, he has in the past had a drug problem. So it's not like, oh, yeah. Completely yeah, he knocked some lady up in Arkansas too, by the way, like this year that news come out. So, yeah, so it's not like outside the realm of possibility that he actually could have had a, tra a crack pipe in his mouth. Hunter Biden um, is living, man. He's okay, partying. Mixwell, Mixwell, nineteen eighty three says, Maddox, I do not, but I have emails from Gmail in two thousand four when it was invite only. If I recall correctly, in Outlook you can export emails, but it isn't in PDF format. Okay, that's not the question, Mixwell. Come on, don't be an idiot. <laughs> Come on, Mixwell. Come on, stay with me here. Stay with me here, Mixwell. I asked the question. Do you save your emails in PDF format on your computer? Look at the poll results. It's close. Do you, do you, do you see, do you see um, how many votes there are, Stan? Can you see the total number of votes? I don't think it shows me. Um, let me go back. I'll have to vote again, which is election fraud. Oh, no. Let's I'm going to steal the election. Hang on. One hundred twenty-four votes so far. Okay, one hundred twenty-four votes, which is fine. We got over almost a half of the viewers voting. Okay, out of one hundred twenty-four viewers who voted, one hundred percent said no. Okay, <laughs> one hundred percent said no. And the mixed fusion says it was a backed-up version of the hard drive. Oh, really? Was it? Okay. So even if you back up a, your hard drive, how often do you save your emails in PDF format? as a backup on your hard drive. How, how often do you do that? Yeah. I mean, just be honest. Tell Who does that? Does anybody do that? Now let me show you something else. I want to show you guys... I want to show you guys something else that is interesting. Let's see. Maddox, by the way, one person said fake poll. I clicked yeah. Uh, who clicked? Okay, let's look at the results again then. Fuck. I mean, that's what I'm just telling you. We've, we've oh, got okay. a lot of. Oh, is it really fake polls, dipshit? Here, let me show you. You <laughs> clicked yes? All right, let's take a look at the fucking poll. Here it is. Here it is, asshole. Wow, what do you know? Your fucking yes results registered. You must have just clicked it after I took it off the screen, you fuck. Look at this. There's your results, dipshit. Oh, uh, oh, Maddox, I clicked yes and it didn't count. Uh, election fraud. Uh. All right, anyway, let me show you some real shit. Okay, here's what I want to show you guys, because I fucking crack this guy. Dude, I fucking do more journalism than fucking websites do. I swear to God, I do better fucking journalism than most fucking websites. Okay, so the Hunter Biden thing, right? I was talking with a friend of mine, and he was, like, arguing that it could be legitimate, blah, blah, blah. And I made the same case to him that I'm making to you guys, that nobody fucking saves their emails in PDF format on their hard drives. And he told me that some Mac repair shops run a script, like they could create a, he didn't say they did this, but he said they could create a script that backs up everything on their hard drives, but then you also have it go through your Gmail account and then save and export all your emails in PDF format. I'm like, but who does that? Does anybody fucking do that? He goes, they could have. I'm like, but did they? That You're making an assumption. You're not using Occam's razor. So, he said, well, it's probably standard procedure in, in Mac repair shops. I'm like, that doesn't sound likely. So I decided to call a Mac repair shop. <laughs> of course you did. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I looked up I looked up a Mac repair shop in Los Angeles. And this one in particular said you could text them your, your, uh, your tech support questions, right? So I said, out of curiosity, I contacted a Mac repair shop this morning to see if it was standard pr practice to download all email from Gmail to PDF format on a hard drive with water damage. Okay, because that's the other part of the story that they said Hunter Biden 
got a laptop that allegedly had water damage and he took it to this repair shop. The repair shop fixed it for $85. They fixed the laptop with water damage for $85, by the way. Then Hunter Biden allegedly didn't pick it up for two or three months. And then per their contract, they decided to keep the hardware, which is actually pretty common practice. If you leave a piece of uh, a hardware or something for them to repair, you don't go to pay for it, you don't pick it up, it's theirs, right? That's fine. But the contents of the hard drive are not theirs. Because imagine if you wrote a screenplay, if you wrote like a book or manuscript or something, you had that on your hard drive, they don't just suddenly own your fucking manuscript, you idiots. It's not their property. You still own the copyright to your own fucking work. And that includes emails, by the way. Emails are copyright protected. So even if the Mac repair shop, all this checks out, right? All these assumptions check out that Hunter did bring in his laptop. It did have water damage. He did get it backed up. The repair shop owner did run this backup script and then saved it in PDF format on his hard drive. Let's assume all of those assumptions are true, right? Even if that's true, they still don't have the rights to those emails. So, just out of curiosity, I still wanted to figure out whether or not Mac repair shops, if it's standard practice for them to go through and make PDFs of your hard drive, right? So I contacted this one, trying to be as neutral as possible. I didn't want to, you know, show my hand and lead them in any particular direction. So I tried to be very neutral. And here's what I said. I texted him and said, here, you guys can't quite see that. Let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller for you. Or here, I can do this. Uh, let me do this a little bit. There we go. Okay. Hello, I have a laptop that won't start. If I bring it in, what's the procedure for trying to recover the data? Thank you, right? That's a pretty neutral statement. That could have been what how Hunter may have brought in his laptop to this repair shop. He said, hello, it would be quite helpful if you provided a bit more information. Please let us know where you're located, what model machine to have, uh, you have, what year it is, what size it is. Do you know if it's a rotational platter drive or a flash drive? Do you know if anything was spilled on the machine or what caused it to not start? Thank you. The more information, the better. Okay. So he specifically asked me all these detailed questions. So I quickly looked up the specs of a MacBook, the most common specs I could possibly find, like just the middle of the road MacBook Pro. That's not too new, not too old. I chose a 2018 model and I looked up the specs. I texted him, I said, it's a 2018 MacBook Pro. I got coffee, uh, I got coffee on it and it won't boot. It's a 15.4 inch screen, 256 gigabyte flash drive because that's pretty standard on those that year and model of MacBook Pro. Just the coffee was spilled. Here's what he said to me. Unfortunately, we can't help you with that. In that model, the hard drive is soldered onto the logic, lo uh, logic board and if the logic board is short circuited because of the liquid spill, we cannot recover any data. Our apologies and good luck it's best to contact other places and see if they can do something with it. <laughs> so there's your fucking story. Yes, Accio, uh, this, I asked this. I asked, these are my text messages. I did this due diligence that even journalistic websites, fucking journalists didn't do this shit. I did this just to prove a point with a friend. I, I contacted a Mac repair shop and I found out even the basic premise of the story stinks. I do believe those emails are real, by the way. I do believe that those are Hunter Biden's emails. I mean, it seems pretty irrefutable at this point. There's pictures of him, right? It's him. But the story on how they obtained them is probably fucking bogus because I don't buy that he had water damage and they were able to recover it. That's a really rare recovery, it sounds like, especially if it's a flash drive that's soldered onto the the, uh, the logic board. Hmm. So just right there, it's fishy. And then there's questions about his signature on the uh, invoice, which you could go either way. Signatures don't always match. That's not a big deal. But the other thing that's interesting about this is Newsweek. Okay, let's go to Newsweek. Newsweek, uh, Hunter Biden, all right? Because it was, new no, it wasn't Newsweek, it was New York Post, wasn't it? Post, Hunter Biden. I think yeah. the Post was, yeah, I think I saw yeah. the story from the Post. Okay, it was the Hunter Biden New York Post link. Yes, this is it, this is it. Okay, this is the original article on the New York Post. I want to show you guys something. 
So this smoking gun article, the you know, email reveals how Hunter Biden introduced Ukrainian businessmen to vice president, allegedly, right? This is the PDF that they link to in here. First of all, look at that PDF. That is not like a full email with the headers and everything, right? If you go through this this whole thing, okay, this is supposed to be like a, a subpoena from the FBI because they wanted to, to get a hold of this information, which again, that I don't think has been verified, um, the veracity of these, these documents. So if you download this document right now, this document right now that's on the New York Post website, you can download this and then look at the metadata on the PDF. Metadata is information that is obtained inside the file. It's like written inside the file. It doesn't change if you download it from operating system to operating system. That metadata includes things like file creation date, um, you know, uh, the size, the operating system. Also, that's like metadata, right? It's metadata. Well, somebody analyzed the metadata of that file on the New York Post's website. And guess when it was created? When? 2019. So that, met, that file was prepared in 2019 for the New York Post and posted on here a week before election. I mean, it just stinks of fraud. Uh, let me see if I can find this, uh, this video too. I, yeah, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, here's another tweet I wanna show you guys. Again, I did my due diligence and I started looking at this. Here's the proof that the PDF from the New York Post website was created in 2019. So here's the actual fucking guy who did it. Check this out. Everyone just I'm going to play this audio too. A little bit for the New York Post uh, article, the PDF metadata that's coming to the question. I know it's a little bit quiet. I'm and you can't quite Twitter see it. About this, I'll do my best. That that's I was fine. able to verify that October 10th, 2019, was when this PDF here was created. Uh, this is the PDF that allegedly shows the emails and. If we go ahead and download this, we can look at the metadata ourselves. So I'm going to download this right here. We are going to show in folder, quickly copy this over. We're going to put this into the... So he copies it over. He's writing some code really to show you he's object. doing this in real time. So we're going to run and watch this. this. And we're going to see we get a timestamp here. So this D is for date, and then we have 2019, which is the year. We have 10, which is the month, so October, and then 10, which is the day, so October 10th. And then you have hours, which is minutes and seconds. So is this George Lucas? Exactly when this file was created. <laughs> so this file, again, that I just downloaded from the New York Post, this article itself was created on October 10th, 2019. October 10th, 2019. There it is. I mean, it doesn't get more clear than that. So this was clearly prepared as a political hit job to go after Biden. And you know why they did this? Why? Because Joe Biden is a seasoned politician. He's been oh. around for 47 years. They don't have any dirt on him. Anything that could possibly be dug up on Joe Biden has been long since dug up. They don't have any skeletons in his closet. They're not going to find any surprises in his tax forms. He's been in the game for 47 years. That's why politicians don't like to run against candidates like Joe Biden because he's already been vetted. He has gone through all the tests and he's gone through all the... So the only thing they had, his only weakness was his fuck up son, Hunter, who is a kind of a delinquent, kind of a drug user, kind of a fuck up, and that's all they had. So they hit him hard against his son over and over and over again. And frankly, I think it's disgusting. I think that, that the children of politicians, unless they are directly working for the politician, should be off limit. I think Eric Trump is absolutely fair game because he's working in the administration. Jared Kushner, Ivanka, they're absolutely fair game because they're working in the administration. Chelsea Clinton? No. Laura Bush's, uh, Laura and George Bush's daughters? No. They're not fair game. George Let me ask you a question. Do you yeah. think that the Republicans are applying this? And I'm asking this to, to Chad also. Do you think the Republicans are applying the same standard to Don Jr. or Eric or Ivanka as they're applying to Hunter Biden? Um, I don't see 
Don Jr. as in as in the news as much, but Eric for sure, because Eric is part of it. Like Eric, is Don Jr. Uh, part of the Trump administration? I don't know if he's part of the administration or not. I, I'm, I know he's part of the business and he's certainly part of the campaign. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Farshid Fakuri says, Joe Biden bought his son that uh, brought his son uh, up that one debate with a shit ton of class props to him. Uh, Simon Smith says he should have named his son Gatherer. Oh my gosh, dude. He's making a hunter gatherer joke. That's pretty good, dude. <laughs> Boo. Osprey Knight says, hell no. All is fair in politics. No, it's not. I don't think so. All is not fair in politics. Poison Dart says, the Trump crime family all need a prison cell. Phil Butt says, all politicians are fucked. Uh, they don't fear the people. That's why we need 99 guns each. Oof. Wiggly Boot says, Trump doesn't have children. He has henchmen. Nice. <laughs> uh, Cloudy Brain says, Joe Biden plagiarized his speeches from world leaders back in the 80s. Only dirt, but he got caught. Just like Trump's wife stole Michelle Obama's speech in 2016. Yeah, actually, I, I did hear about that. I think Joe Biden did plagiarize some of his speeches. But with, with that kind of stuff, they always hide behind, like, the speechwriter did it, right? Right, so they're, right. They're, yeah. They're like kind of hiding behind, behind that kind of stuff. Would that have been Melania's speechwriter that, that that did that as well? I don't know. Did Possibly. She do no, but I, I don't think they even use that excuse. But but Melania's been caught twice, I think, plagiarizing. So it's a little too much, you know. You had a chance to end him in four years. Now he's going to be around next election. Cheers, says David. Do you think that, Maddox? Do you think that's what's going to happen? We're going to see Trump run in 2024? I don't, I mean, you know, my, I was talking to my buddy today and he was saying the same thing. Like, is it possible this guy? I don't think he could run in 2024, right? No, he I can he's... legally run in 2024. Well, sure. But I think he's lost all his political capital. I think no oh, one wants to do anything with him after this. But if he continues doing rallies like that you mentioned, he might do. He might, but man, I just don't see it. I, I feel like the way that culture is progressing, unless, unless, here's the only way Trump could be president in 2024. If Biden comes out and he's like fucking super liberal, you know, very far left, very like socialist leaning, Americans might get a distaste for that and the pendulum will swing the other way and they'll put Trump back in office. That's a that's a very remote possibility. Or if Be something yeah, or if something tragic happens and hopefully not, but like if Biden gets assassinated or something and Kamala comes no, into power. No, I hope that never happens. Yeah, let's hope um, it never happens. Or if something happens to Biden and like, you know, uh, all the speculation about his, his health or whatever. If something happens to him and Kamala comes into power and then Kamala becomes like a socialist or whatever, that could also cause a distaste in Americans' mouths and push the pendulum back the other way. I'm just now wondering to myself who will be the next superstar of the Republican Party, perhaps a Nikki Haley, maybe, you know, somebody else. I mean, 2024 could be somebody new. It's going to be fucking Tucker Carlson. And I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Oh, um, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. There was a comment I wanted to read. Miss Aceto 35 says, Maddox, I handed you a mix CD on your book tour in Austin. Did you listen to it? Probably. I mean, I yeah. generally like check out everything my fans give me on book tours. Jorge Del Fuego says it's not like Trump had political campaign in 2016. I think the longer he drags out the election, loses a lower chance of running in 2024. Well, we'll see. Dom C says 100%. And if Biden doesn't deliver, he will win. Sorry. Oh, Tucker Carlson, he's saying. Danny Nguyen says I honestly think a lot of his peeps on the Hill are glad he's gone. I don't know. I think the Republicans have a lot of potentials. I mean, there's so many young and bright Republicans. Oh, you know who's going to be the fucking uh, next uh, next Republican? I'm calling this. I'm calling this right now. Okay. Uh, yep. I'm calling it right now because this guy's this guy's not even a long shot. I think you're I think you're going to see him be a president in our lifetime. Here it is. Oh, no. Here it is. You're going to see him. Dan Crenshaw. Oh, Crenshaw. Okay. Dan Crenshaw. Uh, I think this is going to be the next Republican candidate, if not president. I think he's he's got he's got what it takes. I think he's got the chops. He's like a pretty reasonable. Ooh, is he lifting his eyes? He's weird. Um, so I think Dan Crenshaw could be it. He's pretty cool and unflappable. 
under pressure. I've seen him in interviews. He kind of handles himself well. He's a conservative, but he's not an idiot. He's not like insane. He's not irrational. He's not unprincipled like Trump. He is, yeah, and people in the chat room are already liking him. Everyone would say, I'd vote for that. Duskin says that dude looks badass. Look, like, fucking, I would probably vote for him too. Like, I, he's, he's pretty fucking cool. He's like, he's a solid dude. And he's a fucking war hero, which of course Trump would probably call him a loser because he got his, he lost his eye. I like people who don't lose eyes. Uh, but, <laughs> but this guy, like Dan Crenshaw handles himself pretty well. He knows how to argue the conservative ideology and the conservative philosophy effectively. And I think this is probably their best bet. If Republicans don't run Crenshaw as their guy, they're fucking up. They're going to be as bad, badly fucking up as the Democrats did by not running Bernie. I think Bernie could have been the, the Democrats, like, shoe-in candidate. And I know Bernie is, like, pretty socialist leaning, but I said this on the last stream er uh, and earlier today, too, that they could have roughed out his, or smoothed out his rough edges by running Bernie with a conservative candidate as his running mate, like, for vice president. But Dan Crenshaw right here, uh, I think has a lot of potential. But besides Dan Crenshaw, there's a lot of different uh, people up and coming through, um, what's it called? Like TPUSA has a bunch of people, although the, I'm not too crazy about any of those, to be honest. Like, I don't know a lot of them, but there's a lot of like young, hungry, passionate conservatives who are coming up who don't have all the skeletons in their closet and they don't have like this, this baggage that it comes with. Um, they're pretty, they're like pretty, pretty sharp. They're kind of like Crenshaw. Uh, I don't like any of the establishment Republicans right now. I don't think that they are, like, it's not that I hate them other than Mitch McConnell, but, um, it's just that a lot of them just aren't that good. Who's, who, who do you got? Who's, who's like a sharp conservative? Who do you guys like in the chat room? Any conservatives in the chat room? Who do you guys like? Paul Ryan? No, Paul Ryan. No, no way. No way, Chewy. Paul yeah, Ryan. I think he's done. Paul Ryan's done. Yeah, he's done. He's he's out. Oh, Tulsi. Yeah, a lot of people like Tulsi. No, no one likes Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk, fuck him. He's an idiot. Uh, ben Fenner says thoughts on requiring voting for every citizen to solve different disenfranchisement problems. No, you got to get rid of the electoral college, man. That's the only way. Alex Jones can fuck himself. Cyrus says only Crenshaw. Bernie would have crushed Trump. People want to change candidates. This is poison dart. Walt Licker says Bernie Sanders. Kissinger. Kissinger. <laughs> you no. Fucking, no, not Kissinger. <laughs> Edgar Bachman says, Maddox, have you ever noticed how similar Bernie's policies are to Trump's? Populist talking points, isolationism, American manufacturing, tariffs, blah, blah, blah. I haven't really, to be honest. But I like, the thing I like about Bernie, and I don't like some of his like socialist policies, he keeps like pushing like, oh, free school and free healthcare for everybody. It's like, but there's no such thing as free anything. You gotta pay for it. Someone's gotta pay for it. It's gonna yeah. pay, get, get paid for through taxes. It's going to be this, like higher taxes unless Bernie has other ideas, which I'm waiting for a politician to come along and there's ways to solve this problem without taxes. You can create jobs. You can create jobs and people say, oh, it's not the government's job to create jobs. But you can, idiots. You can't have no government. You see what that fucking happened in Chaz, in the Chaz area in Portland, right? The Chaz chop zone, whatever the fuck. They were anarchists. How'd that turn out? Is that what you idiots want? Anarchy? I love, I have a few friends who are anarchists. I love like arguing with them about that, that shit. It's, it's always hilarious. Uh, Jimmy Carter, no. Zodiac Killer, no. Who's a conservative you guys are, would be excited about? Other Nathan than... said Jeb. <laughs> Je Jeb. <laughs> <laughs> Jeb's a goofball. I think Crenshaw's going to take, man. I think if the Republicans don't run Crenshaw, they're out of their fucking minds. I'm, I'm going to predict Crenshaw. today, since we're giving our predictions, I'll predict Nikki Haley is going to be uh, the minimum. She's going to be a candidate, but but I think she could make it all the way through, be the nominee. Nikki Haley, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know much about her, and I haven't seen her a she lot spoke, on... She spoke at the Republican convention, I think, on the first night. Uh -huh. uh, she was the UN ambassador under Trump. Before that, she was the governor of South Carolina. Okay. And... Uh, She's managed to kind of keep the most radical elements of the Trump campaign and the Trump, I guess, presidency. Wow, Maddox, there you go. Um, what, off what, of her. You what is that? Oh. What kind of pendant is that? I'm sorry, I thought you were zooming in on something else. No, no, I'm just curious, like, what is that? What is that? 
Is that just like a Miami thing? Is she from Florida? I have I have no idea. Maybe that's uh, something to do with her state or something. Yeah, and I wonder if it is. Okay, so you're saying Nikki Haley? She was she did the Republican convention. She did. She gave one of the the, the opening addresses there, and uh, you know she's she's got a. I mean, a lot of people have championed her as somebody that has a future in the party. So. Nikki Haley. I don't know much about her. She looks sharp. Like I I don't. I don't know. She looks like she could be just like a, a middle of the road conservative, which is what conservatives need. They don't need like, they don't need a fucking Trump in there who's a fucking unprincipled dipshit. Like mm -hmm. someone like yeah, she's wearing that pendant again. Do you see that? Look at the look at the pendant. She's wearing the pendant again. Okay, so somebody mentioned and and I I should have looked in chat long before there. That that's the South Carolina flag insignia. Oh, it's the South Carolina flag. Okay, got. It. So it looks I guess a little that bit, meaning yeah, I looks, was right. That's interesting. It looks kind of like. The Muslim flag, but with a palm tree. Kind of <laughs> she had um, a really banging vacation one year, and she got a necklace to remember it. But it, didn't Nikki Haley infect everyone in the in the Trump administration with COVID? I don't know about that. I think she was the original. She was like ground zero. She was like the. You'll need to look that up. I don't remember that. Maybe she was, but. I think I think it was. I don't know. I mean, she could be interesting. What if it was like a Crenshaw and Nikki? Ticket. Oh, I think that would be a strong then one. Then you would you would have a strong ticket for the Republicans, I think. Yeah. I mean. You know who I always liked on the Democrat side that I haven't really like paid too much attention to was uh Catherine Sibelius. Sibelius. Hmm. Um I thought she was like she was pretty decent, like on the I don't Democrat remember side. Her. Yeah, she's alright. Uh she was the health the chief of health or something under Obama, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's okay. Um, Hope Hicks says Eric J. Nikki Haley could infect me, Duskin. Okay, everyone in the chat's horny. <laughs> everyone in the chat's horny all of a sudden. Uh, Opry's, uh, Ops, Osprey Knight says Crescent Moon is the Turkish Ottoman symbol. It became synonymous with Muslims because of that. Gotcha. Maxwell says Jeb. Tulsi versus Dan. American wins. Yeah, people like uh, Tulsi, too. Scantman says, what's this music? Yeah. It's good music. You're welcome, bruh. One person mentioned Liz Cheney. That would be... Liz Cheney? Liz Cheney. Yeah, she's uh, see that. out of Wyoming. That'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. I just don't see it happening, though. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, let's see here. Anyway, guys, we should probably start wrapping this up, I think. Uh, thank you for all your super chats. Oh, you know what? I didn't even check the Patriot prayer line. We should check. Oh, Patriot. that's the best part of the show. We should check the Patriot prayer line. Uh, all let's, right. see if I can... let's get ready for it. Yeah. Okay. If you guys have been calling the Patriot prayer line, let's go ahead and listen to this. Uh, here is one. If you guys get a chance to call, try to say what state or region you're calling from. I'm, I'm always curious about those. Here's one. Let's listen. Hey guys, uh, really enjoying the stream. I've got a question for you. I, uh, Earlier in the first stream, I asked about what that transition of power would look like. But I think I've kind of got a, a follow-up question. Like, so when it comes to Biden's cabinet picks, what is your speculation? And I'm, I mean both of you. What is your speculation on how that will go? Because obviously with um, McConnell still in, the balance of power in the Senate still, there's going to be a big issue of getting cabinet picks uh, selected going forward. So, anyways, uh, nice job, guys. Loving the stream. Take care. Great question. Yeah, good question. Thank you for the uh, for the call in. I I mean, Mitch McConnell said that he's going to give him a cabinet. He said he's going to honor that. But I don't trust a fucking thing Mitch McConnell or Lindsey Graham says. Oh, Lindsey Graham, that motherfucker. Um, <laughs> They say that they're going to give him a cabinet and it's going to be smooth or whatever. But I think that all things considered and how things have been going in politics for the last four fucking years, I think that they're going to make it as bad and difficult as possible and as disadvantageous for the Biden administration as they possibly can and more advantageous for themselves. I think that's all they're going to do. So mark my words, I've got, I've got a few... I would say predictions, but I know they're going to come true so much. We'll call them premonitions. Okay. First, first of all, Dr. Fauci is going to be in the Biden cabinet in some form, whether Probably. he's the, the CDC advisor or the, yeah. the coronavirus task force leader or yeah. a full on health and human services individual. Uh, I would expect that you're going to see him stick around. 
I would also expect that Joe Biden's probably going to bring over as many moderates that are currently in the Trump cabinet. Now, that may not be a whole lot at this point. And, and I mean, that's that's possibly not at this point, too. But there was a period where, for example, when Trump took over, uh, he would keep a handful from the previous administration. When Obama took over, I think he took George Tenet, uh, the CIA director from George W. Bush, just for a short time. So I would expect that and I would expect Biden to go for more moderate picks, because even though Mitch McConnell said he's going to give him a cabinet, yeah. you're probably not going to see Bernie Sanders as your uh, you know, commerce secretary if Mitch McConnell has his way. Interesting. Um, yeah, interesting theory. I, I don't know. I haven't even speculated that far, so I think I'll defer to Stan's opinion on that. Oh, um, that, that's I'm honored. Thank you. Chewing Love for Five says, good to know that I'm not the only loser that rides a bike with a basket in front of it. Thanks, Maddox. Shut up, Chewing Love. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for the five. Thanks for the super chat. Edgar says, uh, Maddox, I respect your opinion and would be interested in hearing why you hate Mitch so much. Well, Mitch and Lindsay specifically, more than other uh, you know, people in, in government, uh, in Senate, they are fairly huge hypocrites. And I think at this day and age, to find a politician who hasn't done or said something hypocritical is really exceedingly rare. I mean, all of them have done it. Obama's done it. Uh, Biden's done it. Hillary's done it. Trump's fucking every fucking few minutes. <laughs> but, uh, but Mitch and Lindsey Graham are two of the most egregious offenders. They are just unprincipled, um, just weaselly. Uh, maybe I'm just thinking of weasels because I'm looking at them on the screen. <laughs> oh, there's a weasel. <laughs> <laughs> Are those weasels? I can't even tell. I don't know. We're no, I think that was. Yeah. This yeah. is the Bloomberg Quick Take channel that I just have on. I'm surprised um, we haven't heard from Bloomberg yet. I bet he's having a, a big party tonight, don't oh, you? Oh, it'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's hear some more voicemail. Let's check out this one out. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is going to play. No, it's like three minutes long, and it's not like loading up properly. Oh, that's Bob again. Here is another one. Let's see. Here's another one. Here, let's listen. Oh, fucking great. Now we got to deal with fucking Joe Biden's fucking ass. And now we're going to sit here, and we're going to end up having our coal and our oil removed from our societies. Now we got to sit here and actually start looking to new environments, and I'm so fucking pissed off at that. Why is it every single time one of these stupid Democrats come into office, they always come in and fuck shit up? I can't wait to abort Joe Biden's fucking ass. Okay, uh, very pissed off. Look, I get your frustration, man. You're afraid that they're going to come in and they're going to start cracking down on fossil fuels and coal and, you know, all this, like, old energy, which is a lot of people's jobs and livelihoods. But it's the same conservatives who simultaneously cheer and jizz them their pants every time an industry comes along and gets wiped out by technology. You guys fucking celebrate when you put fucking, uh, you know, self-order machines in McDonald's and self-checkout lanes in grocery stores because you're losing jobs that way too, but nobody's saying, oh, let's hold back this technology. Well, in it, instead of bitching and complaining about losing your job, which sucks, I feel for you, what if, and here's my solution, here's my, if I was a fucking candidate, which I fucking was and I didn't win this election, I fucking lost this election, it's bullshit, which I haven't given my concession speech yet, but because I'm, we're gonna take it to the courts. I fucking get, you, you, you bet your fucking ass I'm gonna take this to the courts, make sure that I get every vote counted for the regression party. I was gonna anyway. tell you, I, I was pretty sure that guy was joking. I wasn't totally sure, but then I looked in chat and he said he was joking. So. Oh, he was joking? That was that a was, joke? Yeah, he was going hard. But the thing is, you can't tell because that that's just like a real conversation. Well, here's... But I, I did get... I do hear this all the time, like legitimately. Mm -hmm. People are upset that the, the, the Democrats are going to regulate fossil fuels out of existence. That's probably one of the biggest complaints about the, uh, the Democrats and the liberal, uh, you know, pl political philosophy i guess right so these same people fucking bust loads big old fat loads in their <laughs> pants every time an industry gets wiped out with technology they just like <laughs> it's a fucking jizz storm and they oh say <laughs> they're, they're like oh 
sorry about your job, fuck your feelings, you want to get a new job. But they never use that same standard and apply it to themselves when an industry gets wiped out. So here's my solution, okay? And the Democrats aren't doing this. It's my fucking solution. It's a Maddox solution, because I'm fucking okay. smart. Okay? If fossil fuels get wiped out because we're trying to encourage people to make clean energy, well, what if you just tell these fossil fuel, fuel companies, say, hey, in the next 10 years, convert your operation to solar, convert your operation to wind, make sure, make, find an alternate way to produce energy, and we will reward you for it, and all the people who are working for you now can keep working for you then. How about that, fuckfaces? No one has to lose a job. We still need energy. Just convert what you're fucking doing. Instead of digging rocks out of the fucking ground and then burning them, which is dumb as hell. It's fucking ancient. We're still burning coal. Are you fucking kidding me? Coal? We got a billion different better alternatives to, to energy. Just produce those, become one of those manufacturers, and then hire the same people. <laughs> Problem solved. I know there's going to be like a little bit of growing pain and skills and uh, technology and stuff change. Learn. I don't know what to tell you. Just fucking learn. Don't be an idiot. Learn. That's the solution. When new technology comes along, learn. Edgar Bachman says, Thank you, Maddox. That's my exact argument to fellow conservatives. We need to advance from oil. Yes. We all do. It's, a, it's inevitable. There's only so much of it. We're going to run out eventually. Yeah. It fucking sucks. It's caused so many problems. So it's caused so many wars, too. Yeah. I mean, tr truthfully, if you want to talk about national security, getting off of oil, reducing our oil dependency would be a huge contribution to that. Because then we wouldn't have to be at the mercy of countries like Venezuela and Iran or Russia who have huge oil reserves and yeah. can influence the price of oil. Uh-huh. That's right. Um, all right, let's listen to some more of these calls for the Patriot Prayer Line. Here's another one. I mean, I don't know about, you know, all the angry people that I lost about Trump, but at work today, I heard someone violently and aggressively uh, slam the toilet slate uh, in uh, the women's bathroom while I was uh, taking a dump. So I got that going for me today. Wait, wait okay, a second. Okay, bye. Wait a second. Do you want to like point a the detail. obvious out? Yeah, there's a detail of that story. He said he heard someone slam the bathroom, <laughs> the toilet seat, really hard in the women's bathroom while he was taking a dump. Were you taking a dump in the women's bathroom, bro? Hmm. Right? Is that what you're thinking too, Stan? That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, I heard another voicemail. <laughs> Moving on. <There's> another <laughs> yeah, please. Guys, I have a question about uh, energy policy under the Biden administration. I'm curious what you guys think. Um. I get the feeling that a lot of what Biden alluded to under, you know, quote unquote, his unlike of the Green New Deal may be erroneous. Um, I, I get the feeling that if he really wanted to reach across the aisle, you would treat it somewhat as a, uh, let's call it a uh, energy defense bill of some kind in which we produce more energy here rather than bring it in. Um, I'm curious what you guys think about that that kind of idea and where you think that might go. Thanks, guys. Um, uh, I wasn't quite sure. I didn't quite follow. Did you understand what the what the question? Yeah, was, no. I and, and I think it's a good idea. I think that I think Joe Biden's going to have to reach across the aisle to get something done on energy because if he goes for a hard left Green New Deal you're going to run into major opposition from the Republicans. And worse, you're going to give them something to run against you on in the next right. election, which is something Democrats need to think about a little bit. Don't just yeah, blow all your political capital in the first two years of the election you barely won. Right. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah, you could. You could actually build it or model it based around defense, and that might get some, some more conservative support. But I like where your head's at on that. I mean, working together is definitely going to have to happen. And I, I mean, I could see Joe Biden. He's always been someone that you could see working with, with others, whether it be a McCain or, or someone else from the other side. Yeah, it's possible. And I, I agree with you. If, you. if he's too progressive with that energy deal, then it's going to alienate people and you're going to get Trump in 2024. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. K-Max says, there's enough geothermal on the planet to power our entire population a thousand times over. I agree. 
Uh, GB says, don't worry, Maddox. If you keep shilling for Joe Biden, you might even get investment capital for, uh, soon for your show. Oh, really? Well, I, I wouldn't fucking need it if the uh, uh, Super Chats came through. It's li- fucking leave me, leave me fucking with uh, Super Blue Balls. That's what's, go- <laughs> that's what's going on. Uh, here's another voicemail. Let's listen to this one. This is Steve from Arizona. Hey, Maddox. Your crown sucks. Nice. Thank you, Steve from Arizona. You know what? Your fucking cell phone sucks. Fucking staticky <laughs> as shit. Why don't you get a new cell phone? Because this crown cost me like five bucks. I can get it. No big deal. Your cell phone probably costs hundreds of dollars and it sucks shit. Sorry, bro. Anyway, uh, let's listen to a couple more and then we should probably wrap this up. Here we go. Uh, here it is. All right. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. What I do in my personal time is no one else's business except for my own. Yeah. What? Dirt. What? Out of the women's bathroom. Don't fucking tell me what to do. No. I want to shit in the women's bathroom. Get out of there. <laughs> it's cleaner in here. That's a good bit. God, That's a man. really good bit. Kudos for putting that together in, what, minutes? <laughs> yeah, seriously, thank you for putting the effort into that voice now that rocks. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, here's another one. Let's listen to this. Thanks to you, my boyfriend was freaking out thinking Trump was going to win. All the while, I'm watching fucking PBS NewsHour, and he's like, no, 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 that can't be blah, blah. I'm like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. He goes, I need to have another glass of wine. Goes to bed all fucking grumpy, wakes up grumpy. Thank you so much. Look who fucking won. You're welcome. We didn't know. We <laughs> thought that Trump was winning. No, no, no. Fuck it. I'm all about that. I love what happens. <laughs> I take full credit. You're welcome for that. Here's another one. Uh, oh, from my home state of Utah. Let's listen to this. Uh-oh. Hey, Maddox. I'm uh, from Utah, since you're curious. But uh, do you think that the Trump supporters are going to continuously move more nationalists? It seems they want to head that direction. I see them saying they want a more nationalist, quote-unquote, meaner president after Trump. Do you think we'll actually get that, or is that a lot of uh, hot air? I also don't see Biden going particularly socialist. He's already picked Dick Cheney for foreign policy, so uh, I think he's looking to be more of just a, another run of the mode uh, uh, blue dog Democrat. Um, did I understand that correctly? Did he say that Biden picked Dick Cheney for foreign policy? I heard him say something about picking Dick Cheney, and I don't quite know I what he's talking about there. I can't. Dick Cheney is one of the most crooked politicians we've had in decades. Yeah. Dick Cheney is an evil man. Uh, I can't. He imagine... shot someone in the face. Yeah, he shot someone in the face. Let's... <laughs> and that's by this is by that's the one by accident that we know about. Uh, here's here's another one. Uh, let's see from Detroit. Let's take a listen to this. Hey, Maddox. It's Jacob. Uh, I'm from Metro Detroit, uh, so Michigan, and I brought up a point about uh, what you thought of UBI, and there's ha- there has been some kind of sample testing in it. I know Alaska did this fund dividend, um, and you can, like, Google Alaska UBI, and it'll pop up, but uh, my co- I guess my bigger question is, is it going to become more of a bigger issue with, like, uh, progression of technology and all of these manufacturing jobs getting lost, as well as autonomous vehicles for, like, you know, truck drivers and stuff. So I just wanted to know your thoughts on it. And uh, Andrew Yang, 2024. All right. Uh, let's see. We got some Yang Gang people in here. I uh, saw Yang on CNN or one of the other channels earlier, so who knows? Yeah. Um, I don't know. So the question is, with the progression of technology like self-driving cars and manufacturing jobs getting lost, uh, autonomous vehicles, things like that, is UBI going to be an inevitability? Honestly, it seems just at the outset, I haven't done enough research, I don't have an opinion on this yet. I am completely neutral right now uh, as to whether or not UBI is a good idea. I mean, a lot of people say it sounds kind of socialistic, although I don't hear the same socialistic pushback that, that you get from like, you know, candidates like bernie sanders or aoc or anything like that it doesn't quite trigger the same response from conservatives when you talk about ubi as aoc does for some reason 
but it does sound like it's a form of socialism, I guess, which people aren't crazy about, but who knows? It may be inevitable. And by the way, if we get to a point in society where we no longer have the need for physical jobs, which is probably going to happen at some point, like especially if virtual reality becomes good enough that you never want to leave it, like me, I never want to fucking leave virtual reality, are you fucking kidding me? Then we won't have a need for physical spaces anymore. All you need is a, a place for your body to, to supplement oh, your brain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I'm all about this shit. Trust me, Stan. I get weird with this VR shit. I want to be plugged in forever. You just want um, to be plugged into the Matrix and not have to move or anything? No, I get to move, but just virtually. Like, I'm all about You're that. not going to be moving if you're plugged into your pod, right? Who cares? Okay. <laughs> Why do you need to move? What do you, what do you need to move for, Stan? Well, what if you got to get a blowjob? You can do it in VR, bro. You can get multiple blowjobs at the same time. You can have synapses that create extra penises on you. How about that, bro? Well, what are they going to do? Are they going to hook something up down there to take care of no, you down there? No, Think, Stan. Everything you feel in your body happens in your brain, right? I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Okay. So your fingers, when you touch your fingertips... Right? Those are nerve endings that are firing little signals up your arm, through your body, all the way through your neck, your vertebrae, into your brain, and then it fires some neurons. And your neurons bounce around in that region of the brain that says, hey, my fingers are touching each other. That happens in you know, nanoseconds. But that's what's happening, that phenomenon. Well, if you short circuit that process and just put in some kind of receptor or something here, or some kind of... Uh, uh, you know, st a stimulant, like a little electric node that, su that shoots the appropriate signal to your brain and it's gone, uh, going along the same nerves, there's no reason why your brain can't simulate that feeling of yourself touching a thumb. So every single feeling, every physical phenomenon we feel from our fingertips to our penises to our toes can be simulated if we just connect the right nerve, nerve endings to the correct uh, stimulus and then send that and get that response back from the brain. I so think that, that all of that. This your, the Maddox pod that you're telling me about is going to take all of my my bodily excrement and recycle it or something into into like food. You, you won't even have a body anymore. You don't need it. All you need oh is like God, from the this neck is down. scary. I mean, is it though? Like, who cares? Well, this is so. This is the kind of shit we get when we elect Joe Biden. Huh? No, me. Oh, sorry. That's sorry. regressive party. Okay. I, I'm my platform is going to be no more bodies. <laughs> o only head only that's head. kind of a cool idea only heads yeah. only heads yeah uh here's another voicemail another one from utah let's listen to this i'm actually from utah unlike the other guy um i want to uh oh yeah salt lake was chill today not really any mega hats or trucks or whatever everyone is just chilling celebrating what? All right, cool, cool, cool voicemail. Uh, let's try to listen to man. Some of these are not loading. Okay, here's here's another one. Maybe we'll just wrap it up with this one. I think. Uh, I don't know. Let's try. It. Let's try this one. Here we go. Hey, Maddox. I was just wondering if you uh, if you could tell me why you don't post any articles anymore. Seems like uh, seems like you should post articles because. That's what you're best at doing, and I haven't been, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen you around until I saw this live show come up, and I miss you, man. I just, I really miss you. So, um, come back to us and uh, give us some more articles. And also, I was wondering what you think uh, the election is going to do for uh, the state of Israel, and uh, if you think uh, Donald Trump is better for them or if Biden is. Thank you. Okay, very good, very good voicemail, very serious one to end on. Um, <laughs> yeah, the question also was like, why isn't there more articles on my website? Uh, I wrote a couple this year already. Uh, I should be writing a lot more. I'm writing oh. constantly. <laughs> guys, I've been working on so many big projects. You guys have no fucking idea. I got to show you all this shit. Uh, okay, there's one more. We'll just play one more. I think this one might be from Iowa as well. Let's listen to this. Hey, uh, this is Dirk here. Um, I was want to ask, uh, do you do you need me to write your concession speech? Because I've got a first draft written already for you. I could just send it to your your email later. Oh shit, Dirk! You got a concession speech for me? 
All right, Dirk. Dirk, if you send this to me on Facebook, this is, this is super arrogant, bros. Uh, if you guys check out madcastmedia.com, the, his podcast is on there. It's fantastic. Super arrogant, bros. Uh, but yeah, if you got your concession speech, a draft of it, I can read this. I can read this thing. It better not be a farce, though, bro. Uh, let me see. If you send it to me right now on Facebook, I'll read it. Otherwise, next time. Next time. Uh, okay, let's see. Anything else? Let's read a few more comments, I guess. Uh, here. Someone someone in the chat room says, John Smith says, Maddox, what recreational drugs do you recommend? None. I'm not really, like, a drug guy. I don't regularly do any recreational drugs, to be honest. It's not really my thing. Uh, people like pot, I guess, when they're stressed. That's about it, I guess. And then booze. Is that a recreational drug? I don't know. I don't really... I'm not crazy about anything. Uh, CB Jordan says, don't do it, Maddox. Challenge in court. Yeah, I'm definitely going to challenge in court. I'm not going to fucking concede. I'm, I'll check out this speech. It better not be a farce, but... Um, all right, still not coming in. I don't even know if he's still with us right now. Kevin Selman says, Maddox, I used to play Quake with you on X Mission like 20 years ago. Holy shit, Kevin, that's a long ass... I used to play the hell out of Quake. Quake was so much fun. I used to play on X Mission servers, too. It was a blast. Um, all right, here's another voicemail from Utah. All right, we'll see about this. Let's listen to this. Actually, from Utah here, actually worked at X Mission and knew Mr. Pete Ashdown. Want to say, love your coverage and everything you did. A lot of fun. Keep up the good work. Oh, very cool, man. If you actually work at X Mission, shoot me an email. Uh, I'd like to get to know the X Mission peeps. X Mission is still my internet service provider. They're a Utah internet service provider. They're fantastic. I love those guys. Pete Ashdown is the owner. Really sharp dude. He ran for Congress uh, a few years back. And I don't think he made it but he's a just an awesome dude sharp dude generous kind good guy all around and an advocate and defender of free speech that's part of the reason i stuck with x mission for so many years um all right guys well we should probably wrap it up there i'll be doing more of these streams thank you again for stan morris for joining us today stan the man where can people find you uh you can find me on twitter at stan morris if you want to but i don't recommend it that's right and all my (laughs) and all my social is down below and we'll be doing more of these streams. Spread the word. If you guys like these, don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. Uh, boy, we got ratioed on this one. Look at that, 92 to 86. What did I say that was so offensive, you fucks? Tell me, you idiots. You fools. Tell me Tell me the most offensive thing I said. Tell me right fucking now. Cowards. All right, we got... Uh, okay, now it's got up a little bit. 100 to 85. That's better. Yeah. Strange. Maybe people didn't like watching you drive around in traffic. I don't know. Maybe. Jackson says, haven't seen Maddox drinking tonight. I had a drink. I had a drink. Cyrus says, you get ratioed on every single video. Lol. No, I don't. Uh, Jackson says, that crown is offensive. CB George says, smash that like button. Zad says, Trump lost. Was pretty offensive. Cheeky Delicra says, what? You fools. What's up, Cheeky? K Plague Dog. Plague, plague Dog? Says, you dared to say something negative about Trump, that's why. Yeah, get over it. It's like going to be the next four years, dude. Actually not, it's probably only going to be until he's out of office and people are going to forget him very quickly until he starts doing more MAGA rallies, which I think is never going to end. How do you like COVID? Never had it, Chacky. Thank you for the question. Downtown, oh, what's up, Downtown Drunk? We got some of my Twitch regulars in here. Downtown Drunk says, it's not okay to hit assholes who stand in the street was pretty offensive. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sorry. Real, real fucking uh, controversial take there. Bill Johnson says Maddox never had children because he smacked them out of existence. It's <laughs> funny. <laughs> love you, Maddox. Love you, Stan. Says Syria Hawk. Thank you, Syria. Um, all right. Oh, hello, Koala. Thank you so much. Good night to you, too. Bill Johnson says Maddox never had children. Oh, I already read that. Uh, I'm offended that someone left you voicemail while pooping in the women's bathroom. Says Skate. <laughs> skate Forever. I think that was you, Skate Forever. Rockstar says, Trump 2020. Well, good luck with that. Nathan LaCruz says, did you ever take the crown off from the last stream? The crown off from the last... No, I don't think I did. Did I? No, I didn't take the crown off. Chaggy says, honest question, are demographics on your site's Google Analytics different from your YouTube demos? Yes, they are. Um, Although, I haven't checked in a while. All right, guys, we should probably end it there. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all the super chats, by the way. Thank you, Chewing Love. Thank you, M4 Major, uh, yeah, I did read that one, okay. 
thank you to Nemo the Fish, Taylor Cranmer, Ben James, Hugo Chavez, Jeremy Wales, Squirtle Squad 420. That's a good one. Yeah, these are great. Uh, thank you guys for all the super chats. I'll be back at some other point. I don't know when I'll be doing these next, uh, but we'll be doing these when there's any kind of breaking news. Thank you again, Stan the Man Morris, Stan Morris on Twitter. Spread the word, guys. Lots more to come. And most importantly, I can't forget, every time I sign off, I got to tell you guys, you're welcome.